Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Let's worship the great I am, the great physician, the one who can never fail. Let's bless the one with the resurrection and the life. The original surgeon, the one who can heal just by speaking. Let's bless his holy name, let's give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. The almighty God, the one who can never, never fail. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's go ahead and pray for all medical personnel, doctors, nurses, midwives, the paramedics, that from this moment onward, God will touch them, and through them, He will perform miracles. Let's pray that because of the anointing that God will deposit in them today, people who would normally have died, as soon as they come in contact with these people, they will leave. Let's go ahead and pray for them. Pray for all doctors, all nurses, all midwives, all the paramedics, everyone involved in the business of healing that the great physician himself would lay his mighty hands on them that we anoint them heavily so that their hands will become miracle working hands hands that will change death to life Hands that will make the impossible possible. An extension of the hands of the great physician himself. Let's pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are serving the God of miracles, I know, yes I know, we are serving the God of miracles, I know, yes I know, hallelujah.
miracle working God, the great physician, the one who never refers a case, the one who makes a way where people think there is no way, we worship you. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Thank you for November. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today we are crying to you especially for all the medical personnel. From the highest to the least. By your very special anointing. From today onward. Anyone who comes in contact with any of these people, even if they are appointed unto death, let the appointment be cancelled. Let their hands become healing hands. Let their hands become miracle hands. And Lord God Almighty, as these people will be taking care of others, take care of them. That proverb that says, physician, heal thyself. Don't let it ever be applied to these people. Take care of them. Take care of their families. Let it be well with them. In all their hospitals and places of work, beginning from today, on a regular basis, let there be only shouts of joy. And my Father and my God, I'm committing all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings into your hands. This particular month of November surprise them. <laughs> Embarrass them with your blessing. That kind of blessing that they will say, Lord, this is becoming too much. Father, give unto them. And I commit all your children here and those who are listening to us all over the world into your hands. Another year is coming. Every evil left in this old year, keep away from them. All the blessings remaining this year bring to their homes. Let it be well with all of us. And help us to serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and tell them whether the devil likes it or not. I'm going to see you in the new year. Whether the devil likes it or not, I'm going to see you in the new year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that means I will see you too in the new year. Glory be to God. By this time, Next month, we'll be ready for the Congress. And uh, the Congress this year is going to be an extraordinary one. It's going to be a time when the battle line between us and the devil will be fully drawn. We were not just talking about getting healed. We'll be talking about you becoming healers. 
We will not be talking just about you being free. We will be talking about the devil seeing you coming and running. <laughs> Barrenness will not even come near your homes anymore. It's going to be not just a congress, it's going to be more or less a Bible college. We're going to be extremely powerful. The theme, I'm sure you know, is uh, Onward Christian Soldiers. Some, some of us Christians, we don't really know or we don't really believe that it is darkness who should be running from light, not the other way around. But after this year's Congress, you will never run from darkness again. Yeah. In fact, when they hear your name, they will run. Yeah. So make sure you <laughs> prepare yourself, number one, that you will be there from the number one, that's December 9, to the very end throughout that week. And then invite your friends, your co-workers, your relatives, and even your enemies. Because if your enemies come to that Congress, they will stop being your enemies. Mm, they will become your friends, I'm sure. Uh, and then, of course, you, you know we have all manners of ways of advertising, one of which is the face cap. With the Congress, uh, something written in front so that people seeing you wearing it, they will know something is about to happen. We have armbands. And you, I mean, I'm saying you can make your own. Just get a face cap like this and give it to, uh, what do you call it, a fine artist or someone, and say, help me write on this thing. Congress. 2024 uh, redemption camp December 9 to 15 you don't even need to write any other thing that's all the information they want and then of course you will see some of my people wearing a kind of jacket to show if you, yeah, you can see somebody like come and stand before them so they can see you all right, some is wearing that one to show anybody hey, uh, something that is going to happen, um, and I'm telling you about it. And then you can even get an ordinary blackboard and write this thing in black and white. Put it in front of your house. So that when people are passing by, they didn't see it there before. They want to know what is, what's going on here. Do everything you can. To invite people. It's by so doing you are giving Jesus Christ a Christmas present. And he will return it by giving you a Christmas present. Amen. And you can be sure his own gift will be far, far bigger than yours. Amen. Do I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Mm, I've already invited you now, so I've given Jesus a Christmas present. So don't be envious of me or when you see me receiving my own presents. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Today I've been asked to speak on divine wings by the order of the pastor in charge here. Is he, is he one who tells me what to preach? And you know he's a professor. Uh, you didn't know that? Oh, he said, Professor, that's why he keeps on bringing topics that are. <laughs> Many a times when I looked at the topics, I said, Oh, God, I'm an ordinary pastor. <laughs> and this is Professoria. <laughs> he asked me to speak on divine wings. I saw chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 
28 to 31. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Progress is made as long as you don't stand still. Of course, when I say as long as you don't stand still, I'm not talking of <laughs> turning on your bed. Because when you are turning on your bed, you are moving, but you are not going anywhere. Even if you are crawling, as long as you don't stand still, you make progress. If you don't believe me, if it is possible for a child to talk, the day the child discovers that he can crawl, oh, that child will want to celebrate. Because suddenly the child discovered, I, I, I am free from this mama who is always sitting me down in one corner. And then I will be looking at a lot of beautiful things, but I can't go to them. Now I can move. And what do you mean me by crawling? Crawling means making progress very slowly. In Numbers chapter 14, from verse 33 to 34, Numbers 14, 33 to 34, the children of Israel traveled a journey that should have taken them 40 days in 40 years. That is crawling. Another word used for crawling is slothfulness. And God hates it. God doesn't want you to crawl. Everything he said about slothfulness, about crawling, is not very good at all. Proverbs 18 verse 9, Proverbs 18 verse 9, he says, the slothful in walk, the one who crawls in his daily activities, is a, is a brother to a great waster. That fellow wastes a lot of time. In Proverbs 19, verse 15, Proverbs 19, verse 15, he calls the slothful someone who, whether he likes it or not, is going to suffer hunger. In Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 9 to 11, Proverbs 6, 9 to 11, he says, if you are slothful, you are going to end up in poverty. So you don't want to be a crawler. Uh, it's not a good thing to crawl. And there's a way to move faster than that, and that is walking. And that is making progress steadily. You discover that that child who started by crawling very soon the child will begin to hold on to tables to stand up. Something that child tells him, hey, there's a better way of doing, of going from one place to the other. And very soon, he begins to take the first steps. And the child begins to walk. He will take step one, step two, and fall down. When the child falls down, when he's learning to walk, he, the child never cries. Watch them. It doesn't matter how many times he falls. He gets up laughing. 
hey, I'm getting there. Things are getting better. And the Almighty God even recommends walking. In fact, majority of people who walk in Genesis 17 verse 1, Genesis 17 verse 1, he said to Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. In Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20, Proverbs 13 verse 20, the Bible tells us that even wise people walk. He said, if you walk with wise people, you will become wise. So walking is good. As a matter of fact, that's what many, many people believe to be the best exercise. They even say it's better than jogging. I am sure the uh, medical people here will, I, I don't know whether they agree or not. But when the, the day I learned that walking is better than jogging, I said, thank God, because some of us are too old to jog. <laughs> so we can see walk. And there's something better than walking, faster rather, and that is running. Because when you are running, you make progress steadily but rapidly. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 51, 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 to 51, the Bible said, David ran to battle. The word of God says, you should run with your vision. David ran to battle because he wanted to get to Goliath quickly so he can kill this giant, cut off his head, because he had been told the man who kills this giant is going to become the in-law of the king. So he said, is that so? They say, yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get my reward quickly. He ran. So running is better or faster a faster way of getting to your goal than walking. But better than running is flying. Which is where we are going. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. At least we we'll learned that one. Is it in secondary school now? The shortest distance between two points is straight. It's a straight line. That is why fasting, I mean, flying is so wonderful because you don't have to dodge obstacles. You don't have to turn corners. You don't have to uh, see a mountain and dig a way or find a way around it. You just fly above it. But then, man... God didn't give us wings. He gave wings to those who are supposed to fly. But by the grace of God, he has made arrangement that you could be carried. The day they discovered the aeroplane, it was a great discovery. It was a place now you can enter, a place you can enter into. It will sit you down. They shut the door on you and give you food. And before you know what's happening, you have arrived where you are going. <laughs> I had to go to Benin yesterday after the Holy Ghost service. 
if I were to go by road, well, even though the car will be moving fast, it will still take me at least about three hours. But by air, 32 minutes. So why somebody is saying bye-bye here in Lagos, I've already arrived. I'm praying for someone here today. The journey to the goal God has set for you will be made short. And God said in Exodus chapter 19 verse 4, Exodus 19 verse 4, he said to the children of Israel, he said, I brought you to myself on eagles' wings. Very interesting statement. Because if you ask the scientists, they will tell you that when they were planning to build something that can fly, they studied the ego. Look at an aeroplane and look at the wings. It's like that of an ego. God says, I have wings that can carry you and move you very fast. Take example of David. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, well, you can read it from verse 1 to 13. Good reading. When God said he needed a new king and sent his prophet to the house of Jesse, and prophet got to the house of Jesse and saw some big boys and said, oh, this is the king. God said, no, another one. This is the king, no. Don't you, the seventh one. See, God said, no. Ah. So the man of God turned to the father and said, are these all your children? The father said, no, but uh, the one remaining is not fit to be a king. Check again. And the almighty God said to the man of God, that one oh, is the one I'm looking for. And they brought the fellow that they say does not qualify and became a king. Why? God carried him. The man of God said, we are not sitting down until you bring him. This is urgent matter. I know there's someone here today that nobody thinks you can become anything. But the God I serve is going to pick you up and carry you over all oppositions. It wasn't by voting. If it was by voting, David would never, even his father would not have voted for him. But God carried him. The Bible tells us that the Almighty God can pick up a beggar from the dunghill and keep carrying him until he begins to sit among kings. When God carries you, there's nobody who can stop you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There are many birds in the air. There's a limit to how far, how far they can go. When the Almighty God is carrying you in his aeroplane, clouds will make a way. Rain will make a way. All your opponents, will, they won't even know until you have arrived. There's somebody here today that God is going to carry. Yeah. If you are the one, shout hallelujah. Yeah. God carried David. And before you knew it, even in 1 Samuel chapter 22, from verse 1 to 2, 1 Samuel 22, from verse 1 to 2, his brothers who never thought he can become anything 
The Bible says when trouble came and David went to a cave called Adulam, even all the brothers came to him <laughs> and he became captain over them. Because once God has decided to carry you, you just keep going. And the beauty about God carrying you is that God never gets tired. If it is human beings that are carrying you, sooner or later they will get tired. If it is human beings that have been praising you so that you feel important, one day the same people who have been shouting at uh, Osana will turn around and say, crucify him. Uh, there's one song that uh, they sing in Yoruba. Uh, uh, you know that song? It hey, means my <laughs> supporter. Thank you. Because if it is human beings that are carrying you, one day they will drop you. But when God is carrying you, the Bible tells me this, his arms are everlasting. He just keeps taking you higher and higher and higher. That's why I've been telling you, stop praying against your enemies. Just pray that God will have mercy on them. Because if God is carrying you, anybody who is opposing you, Anybody who is uh, speaking evil about, they're just wasting their time. You just keep swearing. Remember the one who is carrying you is the one who said in his word, thou preparest a table before me. Where? You should be praying for your enemies. Pray for them. Ask God to be merciful unto them. Don't ask God to kill them. If God kills them, who will be around to watch you when you are enjoying? You want them to be around to see your glory. And I'm telling you, if God is carrying you, he will move you from glory to glory. When people are envious of you and they begin to say all manners of evil about you, hey, don't let that bother you. You have to be great to be envied. Nobody envies nobody who is nothing. <laughs> so I pray that you shall be envied. Ah, you didn't say amen to that. He carries you above obstacles. He carries you above hills, above mountains. You know, one beautiful thing about traveling in a plane, and those of you who have never traveled in a plane, don't worry, your days are coming. Yeah. Let me be bold and say that one day you will buy your own jet. Yeah. Ah, you, <laughs> When God is the one carrying you, He will take you to a place you never dreamt possible. Yeah. I don't want to tell stories today, but uh, maybe one or two is okay. Otherwise, the story will not be complete. <laughs> You've heard some of the stories before. We went to one African country, and I said, I want to see the president, just cause he come. And some people said, no, he, he won't see you. And, well, why don't you just ask him? Anyway, so they said, yeah, he has agreed, he will see you for 15 minutes. Ah, good enough. And then I got there uh, with a little introduction, and then we sat down, and he began to talk. 
ha, after two hours. And, and when the president is talking, you don't interrupt. But the crowd was waiting in the stadium. Your Excellency, uh, your people are waiting in the stadium. He said, let them wait. He said, they have people they can talk to. Me, I don't have. I don't know who is my friend, who is, who is pretending to be my friend only because what they can get. He said, but I've heard about you. Eh? He said, let me talk to you now that you are here. Almost five hours later, he released me. On my way to the car, I spoke to him. He saw me to the car. I said to my wife, who am I? Who is the son of Adeboye? Who is the son of the one who was so poor, poor people called him poor? Who is the son of this man who came from a village that is not even on the map of Nigeria? And here now, the president won't allow me to go. Because there is somebody who can pick a, be a beggar from the dung hill and can continue to carry him higher and higher and higher. I will see you at the top. Well, let me conclude because of time. <laughs> God is able to carry you. He has divine wings. But the question is, who will he carry? The elders will tell you, as the traditional rulers, they will tell you, as there's a Yoruba proverb that says, it is a child who lifts up his hands that will be carried. You want to carry a child? The child says, huh, leave me alone. You will say, okay, oh baby, stay on the ground. You want God to carry you? You have to lift your hands in surrender. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 15, Psalm 37 verse 5 rather, Psalm 37 verse 5, commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Surrender all to him. Lift your hands and say, I surrender. I've told you I was a boxer before. Before the day of competition, uh, you'll be boasting, the other fellow will be boasting. He said, don't mind him, I will knock him out in two rounds. And he'll be saying, you, <laughs> I'm waiting for you, I will knock off your head. And then the time to fight comes. Two of you in the, in the ring. The, the referee or the, sub, the judge rings the bell, boom. And all your supporters, you are, they leave. And now you find yourself face to face with the fellow that you say you will knock out in two rounds. And before you know it, boom, he has hit you on the head. Uh, you didn't see that one coming. And you thought, before you know it, you hit the ground. Ah. After some time, you say, <laughs> wisdom is better than strength. This man is about to kill me. <laughs> the, the dog that runs today will leave to fight tomorrow. And you raise your two hands. Saying what? I surrender. From that moment onward, he dares not touch you. 
When you surrender to the Almighty God, the devil will not dare touch you. It's in the Bible. Submit yourself unto God. Then you can resist the devil and the devil will flee. Surrender. Submit all your ways to God. The reason why many of us are crawling is because we are carrying a body too heavy for us. When you have a heavy body to carry, you can't even walk. But there is somebody who is called the body bearer. He's the one with the wings. And when he carries you, he carries your wing, your bodies with you. <laughs> when you enter the play, all, in fact, all your bodies, the heavy ones are already locked away. You won't even see them while you are traveling. This small, small one are also hidden somewhere. And then you sit down, begin to enjoy and fly. Learn to surrender. And then he said, trust in him. You know the problem with many of us, why we are not flying? Is because when God speaks, we don't even believe him. When I say to you that I will see you at the top, some of you don't believe. When I say to you that my children will be greater than I. <laughs> One of my children looked at me and said, Daddy, how is that going to be possible? I said, what do you mean? He said, we know how many days you fast in the year. And any of us who wants to be greater than you is going to almost fast himself to death. I said, don't remove God from the equation. How many of you believe you will be greater than I? Uh, you better say amen. You don't need to know how he will do it. I've told you before, I'm telling you again, your brain is too small to understand God. Whether you believe it or not, it will take you 1,000 years to study all there is to know in mathematics. 1,000 years. I stand before you and I say, I have PhD in mathematics. And here you say, hey, this man knows math. I can only do that when I'm talking to people who don't know anything about maths. When I'm in the presence of fellow mathematicians, they say, oh, okay, uh, in what uh, area of mathematics? Uh, oh, I said uh, applied mathematics. Oh, okay, what part of applied mathematics? Um, hydrodynamics. I see, what part of hydrodynamics? Oh, well, three-dimensional motion. I see. And what aspect of three-dimensional motion? And I've used Stoke equation. I see. By the time I tell you where I got the PhD from, <laughs> you know the man who is looking at you and saying, uh, I'm a doctor of mathematics. Specialized in a pain, top of mathematics. And now you want to use that little brain to understand somebody who knows all maths, all physics, all chemistry, all biology. All... <laughs> who are you compared to the Almighty? When he decides to carry you, why don't you just relax and let him do the carrying? Tell you one story more and then we close. It's a story you know. It happened here. What used to be the church over there. 
It happened in December 31. And the word of God just came and said, There is somebody here who is having difficulty paying his house rent. In the new year, you'll be a landlord. <laughs> Only one fellow said amen that night. Because humanly speaking, how is that going to happen in Lagos? It was a messenger. He hasn't paid his rent. The new year came. You know the story. The new year came. He reported in his place of work and greeted the chairman. Happy New Year, sir. That chairman looked at him. Ah, messenger, sir. Have I given you a Christmas present? He said, no, sir. Have I given you a New Year present? No, sir. I said, okay. Uh, Lagos State was uh, selling some houses. I bid it for one, and I won. And I don't need it. Come and take the key. How can that happen? God. The boy took the keys, to, uh, took the address. He was thinking that it would be just one little, maybe one bedroom flat. Got there and saw the story building. Can this be true? But he put the key at the door, at the lock, and turned, and the door opened. <laughs> he went through the house. Upstairs, downstairs, is this true? The following day, he didn't just proceed to greet the chairman. He rolled to the right, he rolled to the left. And the chairman said, hey, by the way, is there any furniture in the house? The boy said, no, sir. He said, I change my furniture every Christmas. I don't even know where to put that of last year yet. He called one of the drivers. Please go and load my furniture, furniture, chairman's furniture of December. Take it to this boy's house. We we're talking about God. Please stop thinking how will he do it. Stop thinking how will he do my own. He has wings. When he carries you, he carries your bodies. When he carries you, you become a wonder. So, how many of you will want to surrender to him? Completely. So, if there's anybody here who is not yet born again, you are delaying your journey. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ and let him begin your journey to destiny. I'm going to count from one to five. If you are not sure of your salvation, run forward now and come and surrender to Jesus Christ. I'm counting. One. Two. The choice is yours. If you want to keep on crawling, that's fine. If you want to keep on walking, you're doing fine. But God can carry you. He can carry you. Come and surrender to him. I'm calling on you now. I'm giving you this opportunity. Three. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Four. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep coming. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I have to pray now. Hurry up, hurry up. God bless you as you come. Total surrender is necessary if it's to carry you. 
You have to trust in Him. You have to commit your ways to the Lord. You have to put your trust totally in Him. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Father. Hurry up, hurry up. Four. Okay, those of you who are on the way, keep coming. Those of you who are already in front, talk to Jesus Christ. Ask Him to be merciful unto you. Ask Him to save your soul. Tell Him you are surrendering to Him completely. Ask Him to become your Lord and your Savior. Promise Him that from now on you will serve Him. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards this brethren and intercede for them. And pray that the one who saved our souls, who saved their own souls also, that he will wash them clean so that with his holy hands he will be able to carry them. Intercede for them, brethren. Intercede for them. Hurry up if you are coming. Hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father and my God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to bless your holy name for these wonderful people that have responded to the altar call. Please, Lord, receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. Amen. Let them become true children of the living God. Amen. And because they have surrendered to you today, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Amen. And let them serve you to the very end. Amen. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 And those of you who have come forward, congratulations. I want to promise you from now on I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you I'll be praying for you. But before the counselors will take you to where they will collect the information I need, I want you to be part of the prayer we're about to pray now. Uh, well, I believe today is the day for someone. If it's your days, get on your feet and shout hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you first and then you will pray for yourself. My Father and my God, I want to thank you for these wonderful people. Thank you because I know you are the body in bearer. I'm asking Lord that from now on, you will bear their burdens. Yeah. And whenever they cry unto you, Father, you will answer them by fire. Yeah. Many of them have been crawling. Many are walking. Few are running. But from now on, Father, I pray that you begin to carry them. Yeah. Very, very soon, take them to the top. And when they get there, let them remain connected to you. So that even before this month ends, they will be sharing mighty testimonies. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. And now I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, please carry me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Carry me, Lord.